Hi everyone, it's Lauren, New Hampshire Stitcher. I am back with my second video. My first video was my whip parade. And in today's video, I'm going to show you most of my finishes from the past couple of years. First, I just wanna say thank you to everyone that took the time to watch my first video, to um, comment on it, to send me a message on Instagram. I knew that the philosophy community was going to be welcoming and kind, and that has been proven over and over in the past week. So thank you so much. Um, I have gotten a lot of messages in the past week from friends and family asking me things like, what is floss tube? Or did you post on YouTube? What is a whip? Um, so I did some fun explaining of why I'm posting about my cross stitch on the internet. And I would be willing to bet that minimal friends and family will be watching by video number two but hopefully you guys are here with me so it's all it's all well um in terms of the finishes that you're going to see today i do have about 30 that i'm going to show you so i'm going to try to keep it snappy here i won't linger on any project for too long but if you have a question about um any of my finishes i'm happy to answer i will try to um, keep an eye on the comments and answer questions as they come up. So I wasn't the best record keeper for the past couple of years. I had good intentions, but I tend to just start, have like a starting frenzy and then I don't necessarily write down when I finished or maybe what I use. I think I have most of the fabrics, but I've loosely grouped these in things I finished in 2021 and things I finished in 2022. There's like a pretty good mix of sizes. I have some smalls, I have a lot of unframed bigger pieces, and then I have a few framed things. So with all that being said, I just get into my, I almost said whips, get into my finishes. And here we go. So first, uh, at the beginning of 2021, I got it in my head that I was going to stitch all 12 seasons of the Cottage of the Month from Country Cottage Needleworks. And also I didn't really know what I was doing. Like I had no business picking out fabrics that were not the called for fabrics. So I stitched the January Cottage. I'm gonna pause right now because I need that foam board. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. Foam board in hand. And this is January Cottage from Country Cottage Needleworks and I stitched a snowman on white fabric. So my decision-making abilities at this point in my cross-stitch journey were, they left something to be desired. Um, and then I also went ahead and stitched February Cottage, also on white fabric. This wasn't as egregious because I think the only white things that are invisible are the little birds in the corners. So not my best, but we do get better from here. After I stitched the cottages, I jumped in on the Dreaming Girl um, stitch along from Barbara Anna. So here is the, oh, wow. <laughs> here is the Dreaming Girl stitch along completed. This is stitched on 32 count azure, azure, from Zweigart, with all the called for DMC. And I pretty much stitched this on time, um, along with when the stitch along was happening, which was spring 2021. And I had a lot of fun stitching it, but as you can see, it hasn't been finished into anything. And that's primarily because I don't know what I wanna do with it. Um, it's not necessarily something I would put on my wall. I do think it's very cute, but maybe it's, maybe it's a project bag in the future. We'll see. Okay. My next one is, I believe it's called Sing a Sampler from Silver Creek um, Samplers. And as you can see, I did all four parts. Each of these sections is two, two, there are four parts two squares per part. I have seen on Instagram that some people have done um, two rows of four and then they have the words in between the rows or all at the bottom. I decided I wanted one big long piece 
which I will maybe get framed at some point. Um, this is one of my favorite finishes. And this is stitched on 40 count Mallow by Zweigert. I am getting worse at this somehow. My second video and I am getting worse at this. Um, stitch on 40 count Mallow by Zweigart and using all the called for threads. I believe I might have made one or two substitutions, but really nothing of note. So um, I would recommend stitching with the called for. Next up, I have Welcome Autumn. This is, apparently I magnetized it upside down. This is by The Drawn Thread. And I bought this board at maybe Michael's, but I do want to do a few more of these welcome um, samplers. I think I mentioned this in my whip parade. So the autumn one is the only one that I finished and I will be doing the Halloween one. And I think I would like to do spring and we'll see after that. But this is stitched on the kit fabric, which is 30 count lambs wool, all the kit threads, which are, I think, a mix of NPIs and Dinky Dye. And I finished this in, I believe, summer 2021. And then I FFO'd it last fall. So I really like that one. So pretty. Okay. Next up, I have two smalls from the Winds of Autumn book from Blackbird Design. First one I'll show you is Bittersweet September. So this is one of the smalls. And I stitched this on a leftover piece of 36 count winter brew with all of the called for threads. I think I understuffed it. Like I like that it's squashy, but also you can't really see the stitching at the top, which I really like that diamond border. That was the first thing that I finished from Winds of Autumn. And then the second thing that I finished from Winds of Autumn is this Spell of the Moon. And I also finished this one into a pillow. It also has like that fun kind of diamond border. This is also stitched on a leftover piece of 36 count winter brew by r and Reproductions, if I didn't say that already. And I did use the called for threads, which are black coffee and pelican gray, I want to say. I can't remember the name of the yellow, but super cute. These were two of the things I actually did manage to get out the sewing machine for in 2021. All right. The next one that I have is called Ghoul Tidings by Plum Street Samplers. So I actually don't have this one. This was a gift from a friend. If I haven't already, I'm going to put the, the picture of my finish here. Um, I gave this to my friend for her birthday in 2021 and I stitched this on 32 count Murky Lugana by a picture of this plus. I did stitch it one over two and that worked fine for me because as I think many people know picture of this plus is a tighter weave and so the coverage looks a little bit thicker than it otherwise would on a 32 count and it was a pretty big pillow so if you're stitching ghoul tidings and you want to finish it as a pillow i would consider maybe going above the 32 count uh, because it was rather large but my friend didn't like it so it worked out well and next i have another plum street i had a lot of Plum Street and Blackbird in 2021, and I still do, but um, those were definitely two of my entryways into cross-stitch world. Um, so this is Turkey Bay, which again, I finished into a pillow, and this is stitched on 32 count Bramble by Picture This Plus, and I used all the called for threads this was such a fun little stitch. I have seen, I think, some people modifying colors in this or um, the Pilgrim and things like that. And I think all those changes are really cute. But I did the traditional one. And I liked, I had this out pretty much all fall, even though it's technically a Thanksgiving piece. I had 
a little bowl with all three of these. And then the autumn, the welcome autumn sign that you saw a couple minutes ago from the drawn thread. And I do have some other fall finishes from 2022 that just haven't been made into pillows yet. So I'm thinking my fall display, which no one comes to my house, so it benefits pretty much just me. Uh, but my fall display next year for myself will be great. All right. Next, I did Mary Birds, the fill up the stocking. This is by Heartstring Samplery. It came out in a pack of four and it was, I think Beth had four small pillows shown in the, the picture of the pattern, but I did fill up the stocking, which is, I don't know if ironic is the right word because I did not fill up this pillow. Um, I made it almost to the finish line and then I tripped and I fell, but I will, I will fill this this year. And I think I, I don't know if I'll do all four. I think I might do one other one, the one with the fruitcake, but these are stitched on little pieces of 40 count vintage straw flower by Lakeside. When I bought my big piece of um, fabric for Consider the Lilies, I had a substantial amount of extra fabric. So lots of my little smalls have been on vintage straw flower in the past couple of years, just because of buying a, like a yard for Consider the Lilies. Uh, which I did not need a whole yard, but it was available, so I bought it. Okay, um, final three pieces of 2021. I am whipping through this. I'm gonna try to slow myself down a little bit. And like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. My next finish, uh, the, all three remaining are framed. And this is No Bees, No Honey by Birds of a Feather. This is stitched on 40 count Eureka by Fox and Rabbit, one over two. Um, I mostly stitch on 40 at this point, and if I'm stitching on 40, it's one over two. I used all the called for threads, and I had such a fun time stitching this one. Um, so as you can see, it says no bees, no honey, no work, no money, and I hang this above my desk so that when I'm working during the day, I have a nice reminder of why I need to respond to emails. So that's no bees, no honey. I got this framed at Michael's and it does have the museum glass. So there might be a little bit of glare, but hopefully not too much. Okay. Next up, I have Blackberry House by Plum Street Samplers. I I showed this in my whip parade. I ripped it off of my wall in the middle of my whip parade, um, but here it is again. This is stitched on 40 count vintage straw flower by Lakeside Linen, my obsession, and it's stitched one over two with all the called for threads. I don't think I made any modifications to the threads. I, this is riddled with mistakes, especially the vase and I don't think you would know. So it's it's a forgiving pattern, we'll say. But it, this was really fun to stitch. I absolutely love the colors and I ended up picking this blue, it's not fillet really, but like a double frame to pull out the color of the vase, which is, oh shoot, I'd have to double check. But it's like a very grayish blue that is the color here and I wanted to make sure that was reflected in the in the frame okay and my last finish of 2021 is my favorite thing that I have finished thus far in my stitching um, journey and it is Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird Designs I think a lot of people are probably very familiar with this pattern if you haven't stitched it yourself maybe it's a kitted maybe you have the chart um, I so recommend stitching this this pattern I loved every stitch it's so interesting so intricate um, I had a really fun time doing the satin stitch at the bottom and the top I think there's some in the middle as well and it never got 
tedious. Like there was always something new to stitch. I'd come in and do a flower or work on the bird or the house. So definitely recommend stitching this one. This is again, stitched on 40 count vintage straw flower. And I did use all of the called for threads, which are super pretty. The colors in this one are just fantastic. Um, I also got this one framed at Michael's and I believe the, I don't remember the names of them, but the fillet and the wood frame, um, I copied Elizabeth Ann can stitch. You're going to see a theme that when I see things I like, I copy them. Um, hopefully they take it as the sincerest form of flattery, but this hangs also right above my desk and I look at it every day. So that is the last one for my 2021 finishes. And I have 17 finishes from 2022 that I will show you in the second half of the video. And I will be right back with my new pile. Okay, here we go with part two. And I have a little bit more data about when I finished these. I had started to be a better record keeper at this point. So my first finish of 2022 is Real Comfort by Modern Folk Embroidery. This is Real Comfort by Modern Folk Embroidery. I started it in November 2021 for Black Sampler November, hosted by Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery. And I finished it in January 2022. So I started and finished this one pretty quickly. This is stitched on 40 count antique lace by Seraphim using Roxy Floss Code chalkboard. And as you can see, I did cut off the alphabet at the bottom. I didn't feel like I um, needed it and it'll fit in a smaller frame this way too. I probably will order a frame for this one in the next few months. I think I'm gonna say that about everything. So maybe if you're watching this, and vote, tell me in the comments, what do I need to frame immediately? Okay. The next piece that I finished is right here. I don't have a picture of the finished item because it was for my friend, but this is Next Door by Heartstring Samplery. I made this for my friend for her birthday and I did this on a 40 count seraphim fesby and I did it with stash colors. This should this will mean nothing to you considering I'm showing you the stock image but I did do it. My friend did like it I think and that was my second finish of 2022. I started it in December 2021 and I finished it in January 2022. Okay, my next finish is a biggie. This was a very exciting finish for me. This is Huckleberry Farm by The Blue Flower. If you saw my finishes post on Instagram, you might be thinking, Lauren, wasn't this framed? No, I laid a frame over the top of it and took a picture. It needs to be mounted and put in that frame. But this is, again, Huckleberry Farm by The Blue Flower. This is stitched on the called for fabric, which is 36 count shale by Picture This Plus with all the called for threads. And I just had a blast stitching this. Um, those vines are very, finicky is the wrong word. They weren't difficult to stitch. They just took a lot of focus. So typically I went back and forth between some vine and one of the motifs in the middle of the sampler. I think that I stitched that butterfly five times. I ha I'm just bad at stitching butterflies. I don't know what it is about them, but in the heartstring sampler piece I'm going to show you and in Consider the Lilies and in Huckleberry Farm, I just have to rip out butterflies multiple times. I love the pattern Butterfly Close Cloche by Hello from Liz Matthews, but I'm honestly afraid to stitch it just because I feel like I would like throw my project across the room if I had to rip out 
15 butterflies. One more look from Strawberry Farm. As I said, I have a frame for this one. I actually found it in the as is frame section at Michael's. So it's like the frames that they've made as a custom frame for someone and that person doesn't take it or for whatever reason it's rejected. Um, so I got a very large frame for Huckleberry Farm for I think $8 and I will mount it myself and find somewhere to put it. Okay. The next thing that I did, oh, and um, timing wise, I started that one in April, 2021 and I finished it in January, 2022. All right, next one. This is Key to My Heart by Heartstring Samplery. This was a kit from Kit and Stitcher at the beginning of 2022. So it came with the chart, the fabric, the backing, and the key. I do not believe it came with the threads. I think that I used stash threads or close to called for whatever those were. Um, but this was something I made around Valentine's Day in 2022. Super fun little stitch. I think it took, you know, less than a week. And I love the key that's attached to it. I need to find another Valentine's Day pillow to make this year. My corners still pretty round at that point. As I'm going through these finishes, I'm seeing that I want to restuff a lot of these pillows that I made in the early days, but that feels like a problem for future Lauren. So, all right, next one is my frame, gotta grab it. Cinnamon Stars by Plum Street Samplers. This one is in a frame. Here's my Cinnamon Stars, and I started stitching this in July 2021. I finished stitching it in February 2022. I stitched this one on 36 count Liberty Gathering Gray from R&R, &R, and I did use, I think, 99% called for threads. There may have been one thread that I could not find. There were a lot of overlapping threads between this piece and Blackbird Feast of Friendship, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. Um, so I actually had them all on the same thread ring and I was stitching them at the same time. But this frame is from Etsy. This is from Signed and Numbered, I believe it's called on Etsy. And I did um, mount my piece and um, doesn't look like it is, but it's laced back there. And this was up during fall this year. There is Cinnamon Stars. Okay, next we have another blue flower biggie. This one is from Nature to My Needle. I don't really see this one much. I definitely haven't seen it on floss tube and I maybe saw a little bit of it on Instagram, but I loved stitching this. It was just really comforting stitching. The border was, it's two colors. It's very repetitive. You can stitch it while you're watching something else. Plus two. Um, all the animals in the corners were so fun. This one is stitched one over two on 36 count. Picture this plus earthen which has a little bit of a, it's like a neutral with some pink hue in it. And it goes really well with, I think, the color palette that Janine picked out for the piece. Um, the color palette for this is so pretty. Um, as you can see, the flowers in here are like some variations of blue and like a mauve or a dusty pink. And when you first pick them off the shelf, the DMC, they don't really look like they would be colorful for flowers. They look very much like all grays and browns and neutrals, but once they're in the pattern, it just pops so much. And again, I finished that one in February 2022, right after Cinnamon Stars. I kind of had a push at the beginning of 2022 where 
though I knew there were going to be a lot of new things I wanted to start. So I went through and I found, it looks like six pieces that were pretty close to being finished. And those were what I focused on in January and February, 2022. So this is the sixth of those six pieces. Okay. My next piece I'm going to put in a picture because I don't have it with me. It was a gift. Here it is. This is What Remains by Blackbird Designs. I stitched this on, what did I stitch this on? 40 Count Chamomile by Color and Cotton. And I did use the called for threads. Um, I stitched this for my parents. So I actually gave this to my parents um, around my wedding, for my wedding. And I did it in memory of my four grandparents. So you may be, if you're familiar with the What Remains chart, you may know that there is a row of birds at the bottom of the chart. I actually chose to remove the birds and I charted out the four first names of my grandparents and I included them um, in place of those birds. And I think it turned out really well. Um, my parents seemed to like it and it's very meaningful. So that is what remains. And I don't have the next one as well. So what remains was stitched um, in April, 2022. And the next one was also stitched in March and April, 2022. This one is Until We Meet Again. This is from Heartstring Samplery. This was also a gift for my wedding, for my sister as a thank you for being in my wedding. And what you see here is not the charted verse. Um, I removed all the words and I wrote something for my sister um, because it felt like a more personal gift that way. And I think it came out really well. Uh, this was stitched on a 40 count question mark from Be Stitch Me. I had this problem in the same video, or I had the same problem in the last video where there's this mystery piece of really nice blue fabric from Be Stitch Me. So. I don't know what it's called, but I did really like stitching on it. And I think I'm gonna restitch this piece until we meet again, but without any of the verse and without the border or the initials. I think I'm just going to stitch the flower pot and those butterflies around it. And I'd like to put this up somewhere in my house. Um, it was really fun and colorful to stitch and I'd like to have it myself. Okay. The next one I have, I can show you a physical item. This is Spring Awakens by Summer House Stitchworks. I'm gonna have to support it a little bit because it's falling off. Um, this is from Joanne Fabric. It's a, like an Easter frame and I mounted my piece and added washers and magnets, but apparently that was not a long-term solution because this clattered to the floor like a month after I put it up last year. This is Spring Awakens by Summer House Stitchworks. This is stitched one over two on 36 count colonial parchment by Fabrics by Stephanie with the called for colors. It's really pretty. Um, I think I showed the summer refreshes in my whip parade. That one's not done, obviously. This one is. I may or may not finish the series, but um, if I do more, if I do finish more than one, I will figure out a more, um, long-term solution for using this board and then continue to switch them out for the seasons. I think I said everything I needed to about that one. Okay. Now we're getting into seasons of the heart, both the blue flower and with my needle and thread. So in kind of the same year, same time frame. Both Janine McGowan and Brenda Gervais came out with these four-piece seasonal series called Seasons of the Heart. Um, so to try to minimize confusion, anything with a heart on it is blue flower. Anything um, with like a border, a floral border around the edges with a needle and thread. This is Seasons of the Heart Spring by the Blue Flower. Get you closer. This is stitched on... 40 Count Cypress by Fiber on a Whim, and it is stitched using all of the called for DMC. These are pretty, theoretically, they're pretty small. They're about 100 by 80, I want to say, um, but 
the stitching is pretty intense and there's a lot of color changes. So this took me, I don't know, over a week, I would say. Really fun. I did do the finishing myself. Here's the back. I plan to do all four and I plan to finish them all in this same double panel pillow. Hmm. Not too bad. My sewing was starting to improve a little bit at this point, I guess. All right, now I'm gonna show you Seasons of the Heart Summer, but this one is with a needle and thread. So this was the first of the four that Brenda did that I worked on. This one is stitched on 40 Count Papyrus by Color and Cotton, which is what I'm also stitching the winter one on. And I was able to break my fat corridor of pap papyrus into four pretty even pieces. So I think I'll just use papyrus for all four of them. I used the called for threads and I did choose to eliminate the um, labels. So this came with a set of labels for each season and I decided to stitch the border all the way across. one down. What's next? Okay, another frame. Feast of Friendship is my next piece. This is by Blackbird Designs. This was stitched, let's see, on 40 count straw flower, uh, vintage straw flower by Lakeside Linens. Based on how many things I've stitched on vintage straw flower, you would think I had like 17 yards of it. No, I am just a very stingy fabric. Like I, I'm very strategic with my fabric usage because I want to get as much use out of it as possible. This was stitched with all the called for threads and as I mentioned earlier there was quite a bit of overlap in the threads between this and cinnamon stars so I had them all on one ring. This frame is also from Framed and Numbered on Etsy. I framed it pretty tight. That was intentional. It is maybe a little bit too tight at the top but I can like squish the fabric down if I need to. Um, again one of my favorite stitches that I've done so far. When I finished this one I showed it to my husband and he goes I really like it but did you realize that you didn't stitch the house all in the same color? Did you make a mistake? I'm like just get out. Get out. Um, Feast of friendship. I have five more finishes to show you. The next one, I went into a little bit of a um, rampage over the fall, doing fall smalls. So the first one I did, it looks like this because it's an unfinished pillow, as is my way. Um, this is Fall Frolic by The Scarlet House. So I had seen this on, I was just like poking around on Etsy. I think it's a little bit of an older chart, but I love the border on this one. And I just did this on a leftover piece of, what did I do it on? 40 count rain washed by color and cotton. So I cut this piece of rain washed off of, I think there's a Priscilla Dawes by Hem Hemlock and Rye. And I pulled stash colors and stitched this one up. This has more stitches than it looks like it does. And I think I say that for every small, but it really does. It took me a little while to stitch. And I have some fabric on the back needs to be stuffed. Maybe we'll get stuffed. The next one that I did was fall into autumn. I'm trying to use another as a buffer. Fall into autumn. This is by Jeanette Douglas Designs. This was stitched on 40 count antique lace by Seraphim. And I was inspired to stitch these by Penny's Daughter Shares. She's doing all of them. I've done one and bought the other charts and haven't stitched them because that is that is just me. Um, I really liked stitching this. I did stitch it with all the called for threads. The pumpkin was super fun. And I love all the specialty stitches. That was really what drew me to these was the specialty stitches. Um, I don't do French knots, I will say that. But any other specialty stitch, satin stitch or anything like that, 
I very much like. So I found this to be very enjoyable. Okay. Now I have Seasons of the Heart Fall. This is by Back to the Blue Flower. So the heart. And I stitched this one on 40 Count Cecil by Seraphim Fabrics with all the called for DMC. Um, this was really fun. I liked doing those apples and that pumpkin quite a bit. And as I say, I have two more of these to finish. I do think that I'll do those maybe not this year, but at some point I'd like to have all four of each of the seasons of the heart. Okay, two left, they're both big. So the first one is the Equality Sampler by Plum Street Samplers. I call this my fried egg sampler because of this flower up here. Looks like a fried egg to me. Um, this was definitely a long-term project. I'm realizing that like 10 projects ago, I stopped telling you when I finished things. One day I'll get the hang of this. I stitched this starting in May 2021 ending in October 2022 and this was a big stitch. I had a really good time doing it. I don't think that I'll do the other two companion pieces, the Heritage Sampler and I'm forgetting the name of the third one. This is just the one that spoke to me the most. I did do it in all the called for um, flosses and I stitched it on 36 count winter brew by R&R. There we go. Last one. It's hard to say if this was my favorite finish of 2022 because it was close with Huckleberry Farm, but this is Winter Rose Manor by With Thy Needle and Thread, my fave. And this is stitched on 40 count old stationery by Seraphim using pretty much all of the called for threads except for maybe the white. Yeah, the white is roasted marshmallow and I used, is gassed roasted marshmallow and I used gassed oatmeal. And I did use more than one skein. So I was a little nervous about whether the white would look right, but it does. And I did use, I think a lot of people who've stitched this have changed out the color of the house. Um, I used the, the conch, conch, however you pronounce it. And I think it came out really well. Had a really good time stitching this one. This was my birthday start in 2021, October, 2021. And I finished it in December, 2022. In my head, I told myself it would be in a frame for this winter. It's January 17th. I still have time. So I'll probably go on framed and numbered and do a little bit of a frame hunt later. I do still want anyone's opinion on what needs to get framed first. So if you had to choose from all the stuff you just saw, what has to go in a frame, let me know what you think. That is all of my finishes, most of my finishes. I will say I excluded some gifts that I couldn't find a picture of and Christmas ornaments. I have a few. I didn't pull them out. I just packed up those Christmas boxes. Like they are not ready to see the light of day for a little while. And I think I excluded a couple things that I did in like my very early days that I just can't find. They're at the bottom of like my linen drawer or something. So that is everything to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed seeing my finishes and um, enjoyed my second floss too. I've gotten a couple questions about um, how often do I plan on making videos and the answer is I think monthly. Now that my whip parade and finish parade are posted, if you're seeing it, she's posted, um, I'm thinking I'll do monthly wrap-ups and that way I'll have like a, a decent amount of content to share with you. Um, I mentioned in my whip parade that I had certain plans for what I was going to do next and that was a week ago and I haven't done any of those things. I've done completely different things and spent like 12 hours doing a jigsaw puzzle. So I think monthly probably makes the most sense for me in terms of 
when I'm going to be posting. But once again, I've really enjoyed my introduction to floss tube. And I thank you all for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and have a great day. Bye.